This is the Sunshine Cathedral perspective. One of the members in my church used to be gay. Does this mean I can change? An eye-opening discussion took place recently on Reddit's Gay Christian. The conversation focused on a guy who became straight after going to church regularly. The post shares the story of one of their family friends who has a wife and a happy marriage and who is now also an active member of the church. But as the post claims, the person used to be gay before becoming Christian, and now he is straight. The comments focus on if gay is a choice and if you pray, it will get the gay out of your mind. This is not the first instance where a person has questioned their own sexual identity and orientation after coming across religious texts and teachings. But the importance of the conversation is that considering going to traditional church and prayer can change your sexual orientation. One Reddit comment said, quote, if someone said God had turned their eyes blue, I'd raise my eyebrows, but I'd say, well, God can do anything. <laughs> If someone told me the reason my eyes were still brown was because my faith wasn't strong enough, I'd tell them they were being silly. I used to be gay, but church and prayer changed me. Question mark. (laughs) Um, no. No. (laughs) (laughs) Next. No. (laughs) No, no, it doesn't work that way. (laughs) What you have done is you have suppressed. (laughs) Yes. Ah, You have suppressed. You're gay, your homosexuality, that's all you have done. You have suppressed your gay, so call it what it is. You are not living your authentic self. If you choose not to live your authentic self, go for it. Mm -hmm. But do not say that you prayed away the gay because Mm -hmm. when you say that, it damages people. Yeah. It hurts people. That is what conversion therapy Mm -hmm. is based on, that people can pray away the gay. That does not work. You have suppressed the gay. That's fine, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be unhappy. You're not living your authentic life. You do what you have to do. But there's a whole lot to be said for living your life Mm -hmm. openly, Mm -hmm. authentically, as gay, straight, LGBTQ+, however you identify. Live it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I told God 40 years ago Mm -hmm. that God had my permission to strike me straight on the spot. And apparently she couldn't be bothered. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) And in fact, I, uh, in, in my teenage years, I mean, I would go to confession, I would pray, I went to Pentecostal uh, healing services, I did everything I could think to do uh, to make who I am be different. And it just never seemed to, to, to work. And it just got more and more frustrating, more and more heartbreaking. Why does God hate me for being a thing? And why won't God fix me when I beg God to fix me? Like it was a trap yeah. and it was miserable and it was, and it was, and I didn't know because this is in the 80s, I didn't know that this all this had been settled in the 70s, that the American Psychiatric mm-hmm. Association had decided in 1973 that same gender attraction, same gender love was not disordered. But no one told me that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm still stuck in the misinformation mm-hmm. of, of uh, unenlightened religion and uh, just hating myself more and more and blaming myself for not having enough faith. Well, nobody had more faith than I did about wanting this fixed. So, I mean, I was, no one could have been more sincere with, please fix this, please change this, please. And it was actually during an intense prayer session where uh, I actually just got a clear message. And you can say it was my guardian angel, you can say it was God, you can say it was the ancestors, you can say it was my subconscious mind, you can say it was reason. I don't care who said it, uh, but I got the message loud and clear, not even God can heal what is not sick. Amen. And that yeah. just that just fixed it for me. Yeah. And uh, so I did get healed. I got healed of internalized homophobia. I got healed of self-loathing. I got healed of of fear that somehow I was uh, I was upsetting God by being exactly what life had made me to be. Exactly how evolution and life and nature had brought me here. And so um, yeah, I, I don't believe from very personal experience. Uh, I don't believe that your sexual orientation can be changed or that it needs to be changed. Now, having said that, if you can change yours, please do, because you've got a very special gift. So <laughs> oh, if wow. you can go from back and forth, I, you, I want you to be straight today and gay tomorrow and by the day after that. Don't just stick with one. If you can change it, don't, don't settle for one. Be all of them across the week. But most people, they are what they are. And uh, it, 
and and what they are is fine. What they are is perfect for them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so just live your truth. But no, it's it's not changeable. And if you can pray it away, pray it away. But once you prayed and then go away, okay, that experiment gave you the results. Maybe not the results you're looking for, but you got your results. Let's move on to another experiment. Hello. Mm-hmm. Let's you know. Let, let, let's see how much we like diet soda or so. This is a new a new experiment. Right. Because. Uh, yeah, you can't pray away who you are. You can pray away self-loathing and fear about who you are. Uh, and you can celebrate that you are a miracle and not a mistake. And you can celebrate that there's, there is someone for you to love out there. And you don't have to change who you are to be in love with someone. I mean, there's a lot to celebrate and a lot to explore. But um, yeah, pray away the gay. That is just one more form of abuse. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't work and it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I just think I, I know, you know people who have struggled to live a gay lifestyle and they go through this conversion process and then they struggle to live that straight lifestyle yeah. only to come back to being and reclaiming who they really were meant to be from the very yes. beginning. And so and then they feel guilty because they feel that this It's like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's a process that by which you can like, let's just work on affirming who you are. Right. Mm-hmm. and who you really? want to be and living your life as authentically as possible. Uh, and this whole conversion or, you know, I, I remember this one kid of mine says, you know, if God is all powerful, then why didn't God make me white? Who? Okay. Ouch. Why didn't God make me, because, you know, as whiteness, you know, as power, as privilege. It's like, that's what I want to be. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And if God can do all these things, why wouldn't God do this for me? Because I'm over here suffering as a black person. I'm going through ABC and D and the whole list of, but why can't God do this? And you're like, we were about somebody changing that gender. It's like, that ain't how it works. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> In the history of the world, the only person who successfully prayed away their color was Michael Jackson. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Mic drop. Mic drop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, all righty then. Any, anyway. <laughs> But this whole thing about um, conversion, I don't believe it could ever work. And if you are going through that and then you decide to go out and get a spouse mm-hmm. and then have a family, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how are you going to raise that family? Because, and it's something I stole from somebody a long time ago, hurt people hurt, hurt people. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're not authentic with who you are, right. then everybody around you, especially this family that you're now creating, mm-hmm. You're not you. Your child comes out as something other than cis. Then what do you do with that child? Because yeah. you yourself are not cis. Mm-hmm. You are living a lie. And, and you mentioned Durrell, 1973. I came out in 1973, and my mother it's because okay to come out later in life. I love you too. <laughs> wow. I love you dearly. Okay. But what happened? My mother because she was worried that I would be less than accepted in the world, she sent me to a psychiatrist. Mm. I had one session with that psychiatrist. So we're sitting and we're talking and I'm telling him who I am. And he said, well, this is 1973 and the APA has determined that homosexuality is not a mental disorder. So you don't have a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. You are who you are and I wish you all the best. The only thing he said to me that I needed to understand that, and it was interesting back then, that you're starting life with two strikes. Mm. You're black, talking about that, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you're gay. So understand that as you continue to tell people who you are, there will be a whole lot of people who are not going to accept who you are, Mm -hmm. but you look like you're the kind of person who can handle it. And I'm grateful now that we have places like SunServe, that we have the Pride House where people can go when they're transitioning away from their family unit. And I love my church. (laughs) I love my hashtag, my queer church. It is an amazing institution. When you come to Sunshine Cathedral for the first time, if you sit in the parking lot, it's okay. When you're finally ready to come inside and you sit in the back and you start listening, that's okay. And when you start listening to the message where we keep telling you, because that's our main message, that you are God's miracle and not God's mistake, eventually I think that you're going to start to believe it because this is who we are authentically and this is what we present to the world. So yeah, I love this place Mm -hmm. and I think that most of you who come to us with an open mind and an open heart, you'll find that you are perfect just as you are. I went to a child psychologist once and uh, the kid didn't help me at all. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, you've got them all today. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, you went to a baby doctor too, didn't you? <laughs> he was busy running baby doctor. Uh, oh. Now look it up, folks. Look, look it, it up. up. <laughs> no, but we're not trying to change you at all here. Mm. No. We are here no. to celebrate who you are. Yes. yes and exactly. that's a very different experience. And it's it very is, yeah. healing to, to yeah. celebrate who you are. And uh, have you ever seen some of these uh, some of these converted people though? And they hook up, they like find each other in the conversion therapy groups or whatever. And you will see this, this, this just bitter, unhappy, uh, you know, bull dyke in pumps. And you'll see this Nelly, Sissy Mary Fairy guy, uh, also just looking so uncomfortable. And they're just so in love. And then, uh. <laughs> and, and like, it's, to, they, it is, it is on site a joke. Yeah. And then when they come out later saying, okay, that didn't work and we were miserable, like, well, yeah, we were seeing it the whole time, uh -huh. this little show. So just be you, you're fabulous. And so much more so when you share who you really are with the rest of us and somebody needs to see that. Mm -hmm. Some little kid needs yeah. to see, for me, it was on TV, uh, it was Charles Nelson Riley. Oh gosh. He was slim boy, like not every gay person is the same, but that was my kind of gay. And I'm like, there's somebody like me and because he made very little effort to hide who he was. I mean, he joked about it. He lived like sort of an open secret. He was, he was his own punchline or whatever, but he threw it in your face. And because I got to see uh, as a kid, this guy on game shows and, and, and Saturday morning yep. uh, shows that this, and the big banana, he was the big banana you remember that on commercials. Oh and, gosh, oh, geez, I forgot geez, all about oh my that. Goodness. <laughs> so now good. we're, now all you yeah. date yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, he was just too much and I was too much. And I'm like, wait, you can be too much and actually have a career and have people know you and they can pay you to be too much. It was eye opening. Somebody's looking at you. Yeah. And if they see you being you and loving your life, you may actually be saving a life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Mm -hmm. There it is. Amen. All right. All right. Next up, we are excited to tell you about our next adventure with our Global Fellowship. This year, we'll be going to where the hills are alive as we explore Austria and Alpine Europe for Gay Oktoberfest. Space is extremely limited, so make sure to go to, excuse me, happeningout.travel slash sunshine to reserve your space now.